So I'm talking about using Python to access SEC financial data. Companies that trade on U.S. stock exchanges file their financial statements with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, also known as the SEC. The SEC makes this file data available publicly, both in a user-readable form on their EDGAR portal and through APIs that can be accessed by programs such as Python programs. Recently, I wrote a Python program. Let's uh, take you to the GitHub page, and I'll provide the links below. Recently, I wrote a Python program to access SEC data, and I learned quite a bit in the process. I'll share what I learned in this video. It might make you want to give up on accessing SEC data, or it might give you uh, the knowledge you need to do it yourself. The program is here on GitHub. As I mentioned, it's reasonably well documented, but I don't want to discuss the program. That's what the documentation is for. I want to discuss what I learned about how the SEC makes its data available. Off the bat, I'll say that accessing the SEC data directly is daunting, and I'll get into the reasons later in this video. If you want a simpler route to accessing this kind of data, there are third-party providers who make the same data available through much simpler APIs. One of my favorites at current time is a site called financialmodelingprep.com. They have APIs for all kinds of financial data, much of it taken from the SEC, I assume. And they make it available in a cle cleaned up and simpler format. I'll give you an example for financial data. Here's the kind of data that they would output through their API, and they even give you examples of the Python coding to access this. So why bother with the SEC's own APIs? Well, third-party providers like financialmodelingprep.com give you a limited amount of access free of charge, and thereafter you need to buy a subscription. For instance, they limit their free data to five years of history. It so happened that I want to pull more history than five years, but so infrequently that a subscription really wasn't my preference. How hard could it be, I thought, to say, pull 10 years of history from the SEC? The SEC has APIs that it describes on this page, and again, the links are below. Edgar Application Programming Interfaces. Edgar, as I've mentioned, is the site where they store and make available their, uh, the filings that companies submit to them. There are two APIs from the SEC particularly that interest me. The first one serves up all data that a company has filed over the years. So here's an example. I've entered the URL for this one manually, but of course I could have gotten a program to generate the URL. The URL again is described below. You'll notice that the SEC indexes its companies by a central index key, which it calls CIK. And in this case, I happen to know that the CIK for Apple Inc. is 320193. And as you'll see here, there's the CIK, there's the entity name Apple Inc., and then there's a list of various data filings. I'll come back to those in a moment, but the first question might be, where would you find a CIK? Well, there are places you can programmatically look them up. For instance, back on financialmodelingprep.com, or manually you can go to the SEC's page, and if you do a search for, uh, let's say, Apple, speak to me. Let's go back a moment. If I type in Apple here, it'll tell me what the SEC is. 
Using that, I can go through this first API and look at all kinds of data for Apple. Take an example, if I want to look up accounts payable, it should be in here as one of the many items that Apple files. Accounts payable. And let's take this one here. Here is one called Accounts Payable Current. It's got a label. It's got a description carrying value of blah, blah, blah. It's got the units in which the filings are recorded, US dollars. And then it's got various beginning and ending time periods and values and something called an accession number, which is just a receipt that Apple gets when they file a submission, and so on, the date of the filing, and something called a frame, which I'll come back to later. It also uh, describes the fiscal year and the fiscal period, and the form on which this is being submitted, the 10K being an annual report, and so on. I'll come back to these a little bit later. The second application program interface that's made available and documented by SEC, instead of providing all data for a company and for all years, provides one data field for a company for all years. So again, I've gone with Apple. Let me close this window. If you look at the URL that I've typed in manually but could generate programmatically, again it's the central index key for Apple and in this case I've said give me the API to expose data for comprehensive net, comprehensive income net of tax. So in this case I see my CIK, I see that the tag is comprehensive income net of tax. I see a more descriptive label and a definition. And then I start to see the entity, Apple, the units, US dollars. And for each time period in curly brackets, open curly brackets, close curly brackets, there's a start period and end period. The value in US dollar the accession number, which is just the receipt for, that Apple gets from the SEC when they file this, the fiscal year, the fiscal period, the form 10K is the annual report and when they filed this. There is something else on some of the items. It's a frame and we'll come back to the frame in just a moment. A few things to note. Um, the filings are often on a 10K, which is an annual report, or a 10Q, which is a quarterly report. However, sometimes companies adjust their earlier filings with a follow-up filing, in this case a 10K adjustment, 10K slash A. So when you're looking for the most accurate, up-to-date numbers, you should search this API starting from the most recent data and work your way upwards to make sure you get any adjustments or any recent things. The next thing to notice is this frame. A frame is the SEC's way of categorizing the data so that it most closely matches a calendar period. So let me look for frame CY 2020. A little control F. CY 2020. Let's see what we can find. So here, and I don't want quarterly data, I want full year data. So here is the data. If I'm looking for full year data that most closely matches the year 2020, here it is. It ends with a curly bracket. It starts with a curly bracket. You'll notice the starting period is end of September. 2019 and the ending period is end of September uh, 2020. Why is that? That's because Apple's fiscal year doesn't fall neatly into a calendar year. But SEC with their frame have made the best fit possible for me. So if I'm programmatically looking for something that closely matches CY 2020, I should be using the frame to look for that. 
Now, what makes data gathering challenging from the SEC is two items. Firstly, the data fields that the SEC gathers and their definitions and their labels change over time. So if we go back to look at Apple's all item reporting for all years, you'll notice that the first definition of accounts payable was deprecated in 2009, which means after 2009, uh, until 2009, you could use this definition in your programs, but after 2009, you were really better off using something called accounts payable current. That's the first item that makes things challenging. The second item that makes gathering data from the SEC challenging is that within limits, companies can choose which items to report and which items not to report. So Apple, staying with this report, reports on something called net income loss. Let's see if we can find that. Net income loss. There it is. Net income loss. It's got a label. It's got all kinds of nice things associated with it. It's got a definition. It's got a value. It's got time periods and it's got frames when as we scroll down. Apple chooses to use this definition of in net income and loss. What they don't choose to report on is something called net income loss available to common stockholders diluted. So if I try to find that available to, let's, oh, didn't find anything. Other companies might choose to report on net income loss available to common stockholders diluted, but not choose to report on the simple net income loss that Apple used. As I said, if you don't mind all these definitional challenges and the fact that the definitions and the labels may change over the years, you can set up your own Python program to extract data. And that's what I did in my example for GitHub. If you want to see how it's done, uh, you can pull up the program on GitHub. Uh, it is the Python program right here. The documentation is there. Or if my discussion of the challenges tells you you don't want to do it and you don't want to waste your life on this, then perhaps I've saved you some time for something better. Either way, I hope this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. And that's it. Bye for now. Over and out.